Okay, I'm back with the question. So in this question, I'm looking at the internal energy change of carbon dioxide that's given to me. And it is reported to me that it is being heated from 1000 Rankin to 1100 Rankin. Okay, and I actually have options when I calculate the answer to this question. Okay, and I'm uh, looking at three separate approaches. The first approach is ideal gas properties of carbon dioxide. And this will be the most accurate one, okay? And it's given as table A20E. E is uh, for English units in Appendix 2, Chang'e. Two, ideal gas specific heats of carbon dioxide taken at room temperature. And that is listed on table A2EA for Chang'e again. And now I'm saying that, okay, this is not working very well. Table A2E also lists at different temperatures. So I'm saying that go ahead and take the ideal gas specific as a thousand and take it eleven hundred, maybe take an average and see what kind of an error are we working with over here. Okay. So okay, let's get going. Okay, it's a pretty good uh, question because uh, you know takes us to comparison purposes. And what I first do is I go as I'm instructed to do to table A twenty E in appendix two, right? And I look at this uh, U, right? And I'm listing it as a function of, uh, you know, I'm looking at 1000 Rankin and 1100 Rankin. And I read it off um, from the chart, fairly uh, manageable, not a picky. 66, 96.2 BTU per pound mole. If I go ahead and do it for the same one for 1100, I get 6818.1 BTU per pound mole. Okay. And note what I did here. Uh, this is listed as a function of pound mole, not pound mass. You can actually leave the answer if you choose to in BTU per pound mole, right? You can simply say this. Well, actually, let's go ahead and do it. U, delta U, rather, will be U at 1100 minus U at 1000 Rankin. And I got myself 76181 minus 6692. So that's it, right? If I uh, you know write the number, I'm going to get myself... 921.9 BTU per pound mole. So that's fine. Okay, this is actually your answer. But the problem, as you will see in part B and C, is this is not given as pound BTU per pound mole. In fact, it is given as BTU per pound mass. Okay, so what I have to do is, as we discussed this in the previous segments, is the molecular weight of CO2. And I look at actually for that when I go to A1E, or you may remember this, uh, you know, because carbon molecular weight is 12, oxygen is 16, so I can multiply them and add them up so you get 44.01. If you go to the A1E, it says 0.1, so let's be specific, pound mole, rather pound mass, per pound mole, right? And if I want to convert this BTU, uh, pound mole, if I divide this by pound mole, pound mass, so you will see that I'm going to get pound moles cancel, I get B2 per pound mass, right? So I'm going to do that simply. I'm going to go ahead and uh, write that this U will be, well, rather delta U will be um, delta U bar divided by, what is it, 44.01, and this was given 921.9, and when I punch into my calculator, I get myself 20.95 BTU pound mass, Okay, so this is actually the accurate answer for part A. Let's go to part B. So now I'm doing some uh, assumptions. Okay, I'm incorporating some error in my analysis. And when I look at this uh, particular uh, table, let me go up over here. Um, I read the table. It says at the top, it says at 80 Fahrenheit. So that's the room temperature, 80 Fahrenheit. So I also, you know, like I'm using Rankin, so I want to... Uh, convert this Fahrenheit to Rankin just to have some idea, okay? As you remember, Rankin will be Fahrenheit plus 459.67, right? We discussed that. So you get yourself, I, mean, I don't know, right around 540, okay? It doesn't have to be exact. You will see that this is lower than the information or the temperature given to me, okay? The next question I have is, I have a CV and CP listed there. Which one am I going to use? Okay, so I go back to my uh, theory. Delta, delta U is related to CV constant volume. If it is related to constant pressure, when I multiply that by the temperature difference, I'm going to get H, enthalpy difference. Okay, so be, be, be careful about it. All right. So I, lead, I read my CV value and it says that it is 0 0.158 BTU per pound mass 
times Rankine. Okay, and I'm going to highlight that I, I am aware uh, because I'm looking at the temperature. As I increase the temperature, this number should go up. So I'm going to undershoot by 200.95, but how much? That is the question. Okay, and then if you remember my notes, uh, delta U, the previous segment, we did this uh, CV times uh, DT. Do you remember that? Um, obviously, CV is constant, so I can take out the integral. So I can get 0 0.158 BTU per pound mass times Rankine. DT, integral of DT is delta T, right? T2 minus T1. So let's write it T2 minus T1. Let me write it this way. And this is 1100 Rankine. This is 1000 Rankine. So it's 100 that, uh, you know, uh, that, that, that parentheses is 100. So it's kind of easy. So you get 15.8, right? Um, so you get your delta U as 15.8 BTU per pound mass. Okay, so you can see this is not a good assumption at all, right? So you can see the error. Um, I don't know off the top of my head, but it will be... Let me actually calculate it all right back. Okay, so the error will be right around 25%, so it's with 24.6% error. So this is kind of unacceptable, right? That's not good at all, okay? And again, I want to highlight, this is not going to be always like this much of an error. If I go up in temperature, this error will go up. If I go down in the temperature that I am working with, then I will have less error because my uh, CV will, in actuality, will be similar to 0 0.158, okay? So that the temperature is an element of the game over here. It really depends, all right? So due to the significant time uh, temperature difference, I get a pretty bad uh, uh, final answer, okay? So then I look at this particular... Uh, a to E B, and I look at it. Unfortunately, it's listed as a function of Fahrenheit, but the unit is given in terms of the Rankine C V, just like what I wrote over here. So it is written with respect to the Rankine, but the graph A to E B is with respect to Fahrenheit. So now I'm going to convert things to uh, you know uh, Fahrenheit. So I have uh, uh, so that's kind of a little bit of a mess to be honest with you. 1100, and I have a thousand. And these are in Rankine. So if I convert this, I'm not going to get something nice. I'm going to get 540 plus 33 Fahrenheit. And if I do it, you can imagine 640 plus 33 Fahrenheit. Okay? But I look at the chart myself. I look at, and I have 500 Fahrenheit. I don't have obviously 540.33. I have 600 Fahrenheit. I have 700 Fahrenheit. And my CV is listed there. Again, the unit is it's listed as BTU per pound mass times Rankine, not Fahrenheit. It's kind of weird. Um, so I I note it. It says 0 0.202, 0 0.210, 0 0.217. So if you remember from uh, module three, I introduced you the concept of interpolation, right? So my 540.33 and 640.33 falls right in between those two values. So I should get something, you know, in between that, those two, okay? So then let's do an interpolation. I don't want to show both of them because it's kind of, um, you know, uh, I've done it in the previous segment. But this is what is 600 minus 500 will be equal to this U that I'm at 540.33 minus 0.202 divided by 500, this is going to be 540.33. So if I do this, you will see this, let me write this value. Um, so this value will turn out to be 0 0.2052. This number will turn out to be, I'm not going to show the details, 2128. Okay. And then I look at my notes, um, because it's not constant. So what I do is I have delta U. Here's what I said is, as I said in the previous uh, part B, it's going to be CVDT. Now, what I will do is, I will take the average of these two values, and I will use this, I showed you that uh, also this is CV average times, uh, by basically delta T, right? And you can see CV average will be basically calculated at CV at 1000 plus CV at uh, 1100, right? Divided by 2 times delta T. Okay, so if I do that, I simply put the numbers in 2128 plus 0.2052 divided by 2 times 100, right? Delta T in terms of Rankine, doesn't really matter, Rankine versus Fahrenheit, right? Yeah, the delta T is the same. So I get uh, 100 over here, 
So if I go ahead and do it, I get myself a 20.9, okay? BTU per pound mass, okay? So you can see how much better this is. This was, uh, the real answer is 20.95, right? Right here. This is how much I get if I use the room temperature values because I'm pretty escalated in temperatures. And if I do kind of like an average, uh, you can see that I'm going to get 20.9. And the error is uh, like what? A quarter of a percent or something like that. 0.25% something um, error. So it's nothing, right? So you can see this is a good analysis. But make sure, uh, you know, if the temperature difference is more, like 1,000 to 2,000, this number may be more, have more error in it. Okay, I just want to bring that to your attention. With that, that's going to do it for this particular segment. Uh, have a good day.